Yo, what is up everybody and welcome to the 2020 NFL Draft. The New York Jets are on the clock with the number one overall pick. Everybody's trying to tank for Tua, but the Jets already have Sam Darnold. So the expected pick here is the pass rusher out of Ohio State, Chase Young. We are in the premier Madden League. Season one has come and gone. The Chicago Bears ended up being the Super Bowl champions and the offseason has also come and gone. But we will be going over the offseason specifically for our Miami Dolphins in this video, along with the entire first round of the 2020 NFL Draft. As you guys see, the Jets ended up picking Chase Young and right away, the Packers were ready to pick AJ Peneza. I do not know how to pronounce that man's name. I apologize, but he ends up very quickly being the number two overall pick. So right away, teams going with top pass rushers. Now we go to the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are the first team that potentially end up taking, yes, they do, Tua goes off the board. And now here come the Cleveland Browns with pick number four. You guys see the first time the Dolphins will be picking in the draft will be the 14th overall pick. That was the pick of the Houston Texans. As you guys know, the Texans and the Dolphins made the trade for Laramie Tunsil. And because of that, we had the Texans first round pick this season and the Texans first round pick next season along with their second round pick. So before we continue with the NFL draft, let's go over some offseason moves. And there are a lot to go over. Jason Verrett, Nelson Aguilar, Brett Jones, Matthew Judon. By the way, yes, that is Nelson Aguilar at the running back position. We have Brashad Perriman signed, Vic Beasley from the Atlanta Falcons, Marcus Gilbert at the right tackle position from the Pittsburgh Steelers, Jordan Howard, the second running back and second player taken from the Philadelphia Eagles in the offseason. There are so many moves to go over for this Miami Dolphins team that entered the offseason with over $100 million in cap space to play around with, and the Dolphins made splashes. All of those players signed, besides Marcus Gilbert, were on one year deals. So, since we have two top running backs on the roster, and Nelson Aguilar is a running back, we put Kalen Bellage on the trade block in efforts to try to move up in the draft. Since Kalen Bellage was going to be potentially the RB number three in the depth chart, despite the great season he had, we decided to put him on the block and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers ended up biting. So we move up 65 picks, 55 picks, right? Yeah, I believe that is 50, no, no, it's, it's 55 picks. I'm pretty sure it's 55 picks, man. I used to be really good at math and now you know that I do YouTube and all this stuff. I, I'm kind of slacked a little bit, right? My quick math is a little bit off. Quick math, but not good math. So anyways, let's check out this depth chart for a second and see what, we're, what we are working with. So we convert Nelson Aguilar to the running back position. He's going to end up being a pretty elusive running back for us. We also have Jordan Howard. He'll be RB1B as Nelson Aguilar is 1A. Jordan Howard is high carrying. So in case we need to, you know, melt that clock or anything like that, through some people, Jordan Howard is there. The defensive end, we got a lot of upgrades. We got Vic Beasley. We got Matthew Judon. We got Jason Ferret, all signed as big pieces for us. You see Dylan Moses out of Alabama going off the board to the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens really love themselves. Alabama middle linebackers, right? CJ Mosley was from Bama, I believe. He used to be on their team, so... You see the draft continuing to fold. And yeah, so we made a lot of moves in the offseason. And a lot of the, pretty much everybody we signed there are all in one year deals. The reason for that was the offseason was a little bit underwhelming as far as the free agency class. There weren't many big names. Many of the potential free agents that would be big names were re signed by their squads. So, you know, rather than just blowing money on like, you know, overpaying guys on three-year deals. We're just going to sign, you know, people in positions of needs at one-year deals, and then we'll take it into the next offseason and see what we could do with that cap space. The only guy that was not on a one-year deal was Marcus Gilbert. We signed him to a two-year deal. As you guys know, the offensive line is definitely the biggest weakness of this Miami Dolphins team. So I really want to upgrade the offensive line more than we did in the offseason, but there just weren't many good offensive linemen. So I made sure we won the bid for Marcus Gilbert. There was no way we were losing that bid, all right? I was willing to overpay him. I think we paid him like 13 mil for two years. So that ends up being like 25 point something mil over the course of the deal. Like, I don't think Marcus Gilbert's that good, but we just needed him that badly. Judon, you know, we got an extra pass rusher. Vic Beasley, an extra, extra pass rusher. The pass rush was pretty weak on this Dolphins team. So, you know, 
we end up making some moves in that end. As you see, the draft continuing to fold. We're now at the ninth overall pick for the Buffalo Bills. And then, like I said, as far as trading Kalen Bellage, you know, um, we're looking to move up in the draft. So instead of having like the 90th pick, now we have the 35th pick. So I'm definitely cool with that. As you guys see, uh, that's Grant Delpit from LSU going off the board at the strong safety position. He's a 78 overall, I believe. I think that's the highest overall player taken off the board so far. So that's pretty. That's a pretty impressive pick by our division rivals, the Buffalo Bills. Tennessee Titans on the clock with the 10th overall pick. So we have two picks right now in the first round. The 14th overall pick and the what is it the 27th overall pick the 27th pick is our actual pick and now we have two picks in the second round of the draft so we are pretty loaded here to try actually no we have three picks in the second round as you guys see our draft board and by the way if you couldn't tell this is an imported draft class that we are using in this cfm so these are pretty much all real life college players that are eligible to make it into the NFL draft eligible after the college season. So it's definitely dope that we have an imported class, right? And just, you know, random rookies on the board. So, you know, the 2020 season should be a lot of fun for ourselves and most other teams in the league. And since we have, you know, a lot of draft picks and stuff like that, we have a lot of chances to make moves. So what I'm showing you guys right now is our draft board and you guys see scrolling down. Uh, this is somewhat, or I, I would say this is a pretty organized draft board, right? We have everybody in line of where they're projected to go, what rounds and stuff like that, as well as positions of need for us. And one big position of need all of a sudden is the wide receiver position. Check this one out. Devontae Parker, our second round pick and our late fourth round pick. Actually, I, that might've been our mid fourth round pick. Either way, gone. So now Devontae Parker is gone. Devontae Parker was on an expiring deal and I really didn't think we were gonna re-sign him. So I put him on the block and we end up trading him to the New England Patriots. And now we have the Patriots first round pick. The Miami Dolphins now three picks in the first round. We pick 14, we pick 18. Now on top of that, we pick the Ford pick in the second round after that trade with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for Kalen Bellage. And for some reason, we had the Saints second round pick. I'm not, I don't really know like how we got that pick. That's, that's like a real life trade. I'm pretty sure that happened where the Dolphins got the Saints second round pick. So we got that going for us. As you see Isaiah Simmons, 6'4", safety. He's also like a lot outside linebacker in some cases. So we'll see what the Dallas Cowboys do with him. We are almost here, man. Oh man, I'm a little bit nervous because this is a franchise altering draft for the Miami Dolphins. We have now five of the top 46 or 47 picks in the draft. And we're going to be drafting a lot of young studs, a lot of day one starters. Everyone that we draft will most likely be a day one starter on this team. So, you know, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what what uh, direction we're going with with all these picks. But I know we're going to be drafting at least one wide receiver. This draft is very wide receiver heavy. And because of that, we ended up trading Devontae Parker. We cut Albert Wilson for cap space. And our... Top two guys from last year are gone. The good news is we still have Jakeem Grant. So, like, you know, if anything, we can still be granting touchdowns out here as we are now one pick away from the Dolphins' first of three picks in the first round of the draft. Kenneth Murray out of Oklahoma goes off the board. The top guy probably on our draft board, as far as receivers, is Henry Ruggs since he's just a speedster and you know I love speed on my team. And otherwise, besides him, you know, Colin Johnson's on the board. You got... That shit Kizma dude or whatever his name is from Colorado. You got CD Lamb out there. A lot of Tyrone Wallace. A lot of big receivers out there that we could draft within like one of our five draft picks that we have to play around with. We also have a fourth round pick to use and we have two no we have one sixth round pick and three late seven seventh round picks so you know those three seventh round picks we're just gonna kind of see what happens out here and i'm just sitting here waiting denver broncos taking their dear sweet time at this point i have my mind set if the broncos don't pick henry ruggs that's probably gonna be the guy we pick with this 14th overall pick otherwise we might go into a different direction maybe look at offensive line see what kind of big offensive lineman names are on the board and there we go henry ruggs gone the second alabama receiver taken in the first 13 picks so that was the guy we were gonna take now we gotta kind of regroup and see what our draft board is saying and our draft board is saying that bryce hall is the best player av available along with Derek brown and i'm definitely feeling bryce hall even though we already have Xavier and howard and we signed jason verrett in the offseason 
I feel like, you know, Verrett's going to be on a one-year deal. We probably won't re-sign him if we draft Bryce Hall. So, I really like the way Bryce Hall's numbers look, his combine stats and all of that. So, that's the way we're going. Bryce Hall with the 14th overall pick out of Virginia to the Miami Dolphins. And the Dolphins secondary continues to grow in strength. And look at the stats. 92 speed. The zone coverage is definitely slacking, but that's something we'll work on with, you know, attribute points throughout the season and otherwise you know physical stats are definitely there for Bryce Hall he is 6'1 200 pounds 22 years old and you know we'll definitely be using Bryce slot this or Bryce Hall this year I was looking at his archetype as a slot player but as you guys saw I think he was the fourth player in true value and we got him at the 14th overall pick so I'm definitely happy about that as you guys see now the Steelers are on the board with the 15th overall pick we got the Seahawks to wait on the Saints and then we're back on the board so once we get back on the board as you see that uh Chanel dude from Colorado 77 overall maybe we should have picked him man I don't even think I had him on my draft board so uh slight mistake by the GM not scouting this dude out because he was like a beast but I mean still I'm, I'm pretty good where we took Bryce Hall and you know I would rather focus on building the uh defense up and then offense will kind of take it as it goes so as we enter the 2020 nfl season josh rosen is definitely still our quarterback the running back position is pretty settled the wide receiver position needs to be settled in this draft the offensive line position all the offensive line besides the right tackle needs to be addressed maybe left tackle maybe right now because we have uh kelvin beecham out there as you see the seahawks taking their time a little bit with this draft pick i'm like oh man who am i picking next i think right now if things play out and Derek Brown doesn't go off the board, we may take Derek Brown. As you see, Walker Little out of Stanford goes off the board, left tackle position. That's definitely a guy we might have looked at, but he's gone now. And now at this point, I'm thinking, you know, if we don't draft a receiver here, it's going to be Derek Brown. Because as you guys saw, he's projected as an early first round pick. And if he's still on the board at around 18, even though, you know, we, we addressed the front seven a bit in the offseason and we have Davin Godshaw as a defensive tackle. Godshaw is another guy that's on an expiring deal. So, you know, Derek Brown's probably going to be our guy here. But last time I said that <laughs> I had my guy, he was taking the pick right before us. So, you know, I'm on pins and needles right now to see what the New Orleans Saints do right now. And then after this pick, we have one more pick in the first round. And I'm telling you guys, we will be drafting a wide receiver. So if we don't get Derek Brown here, which it looks like we're not going to, Jake Hansen out of Oregon center goes off the board. I, I was going to say we're drafting a receiver at this spot most likely, but as we go to the draft board, you know, Derek Brown is the clear-cut guy. Darren Powell at the right tackle position, we could potentially move Gilbert to left tackle, and whatever it takes, you know, maybe we'll worry about that later on in the first round. But right now, we're just going to go with the best player available. I feel like, you know, when you're this high in the draft, you want to take the best player available over, you know taking like a position of need maybe in the second round we'll go with more need spots but let's just take the best players available and so far that strategy is working out great for us Derek Brown also projected to be a top 10 overall pick and look at these physical stats on Derek Brown 95 strength 81 block shedding 84 power move right away he was like an absolute monster for us and I'm definitely happy about this pick here because there's just one thing the Dolphins need is they need intimidation in the defensive line. We have Christian Wilkins, the first round pick from the Dolphins last year. But besides that, there is nobody else in the defensive line that really struck any sort of fear. And that definitely hurt us in our postseason game when we played against the Indianapolis Colts. You had Naheem Hines just running free without a care in the world left and right because, you know, we weren't getting any box sheds. So hopefully Derek Brown can provide some you know block sheds for us and help us in our run defense which wasn't bad last year it just could have been a lot better we actually had talent on the board as you guys see justin herbert off the board out of oregon i believe this is the second quarterback off the board Tua went with pick number four to the jacksonville jaguars and justin herbert goes to the tampa bay buccaneers the bucks did not re-sign james winston in the offseason so they end up drafting Justin Herbert here with the 21st overall pick, a franchise altering decision. As you see, Alara Jackson off the board, the Los Angeles Chargers are on the board and our pick, our next pick is coming up soon, man. The Dolphins just keep on showing up on the board. So right now my mindset is if Darren Paulo, the right tackle does not come off the board, that will be our guy with our pick because man, it is an understatement to say we need some help on the offensive line. There are a couple of teams that can use offensive line help right in front of us. So 
We'll see what happens here. The Los Angeles Chargers are on the board, and Phillip Rivers actually retired in the offseason. So the Chargers are looking for maybe some help, and they're taking Darren Paul out of Utah. That was our guy right there. So now we got to, you know, restock our draft decisions here. Think about what we're about to do as uh, you see the New York Giants here are on the clock. The Giants, another team that might think about, you know, they have a lot to think about, man. The Giants did really well last season, but that was despite their roster. That was because Saquon Barkley, you see the Giants go pass rusher. They go with Gross Matos out of Penn State. That was the guy that we had on our board potentially if, you know, Paolo wasn't there. So two guys that we we're thinking about taking with the 27th overall pick are now gone. Now at this point, I'm pretty set on the fact that we are probably going to take a wide receiver with the 27th overall pick. So our third and final pick of the first round most likely going to be a wide receiver unless things change the minnesota vikings are on the board the vikings aren't really needing a wide receiver they need help elsewhere the redskins might want to get a receiver even though they have terry McLaurin. you never know they might want to get more weapons for dwayne hashkins so we'll see if anybody snipes one of our picks out here the vikings uh, they're making their moves right now as so we check up on the draft board one more time to see exactly who we're going to take and We'll either take Tylen Wallace here, or we will take Colin Johnson. As you guys can tell by the draft board, Colin Johnson's our guy, and, you know, he'll probably be our pick if it comes down to the fact that no one takes him. Colin Johnson, 6'6 six, six out of Texas. I mean, he might be the new age Megatron. I'm not sure he'll have a lick of route running into his game, but if he could be a jump ball guy for us and have any sort of decent speed, any sort of decent athleticism, he could be a real downfield threat for the Miami Dolphins, and he'll pretty much take the spot of Devontae Parker if, you know, and when he joins this team, because I'm pretty sure the Redskins aren't going to grab him. I'm not even sure the Redskins are here for the draft. The clock goes all the way down to Washington Redskins, and I believe they get auto-picked. The left guard out of Oregon, Shane Lemino, or Lemo. I, I don't got all these pronounce pronunciations in my back shoulder, man. I apologize, but... I'll tell you what, let's check out this draft board one more time. There's a lot of decent players out here. There's a lot of good cornerbacks in this draft as well, but we already have three good corners on our team. So we're just not going to draft a corner and we end up pulling the trigger pretty quickly on Colin Johnson as the 27th overall pick in the draft and his true value is 13th. So once again, the Miami Dolphins are making good decisions in this draft. It's very important that you do not strike out. And even though this was more of a position of need for us, it was also potentially the best player available on the board. So the Miami Dolphins with their three first round picks end up making three big plays. 89 speed, 81 catch and traffic, 87 spec catch, 85 release is not bad, 95 jumping. The dude is 6'6 and he has 95 jumping, 93 acceleration. The route running is not there at all, but... That big boy can fly. That big boy can get up. And that's probably what he's going to be doing for us. So we'll see how that works out for us. The, who is this? The Kansas City Chiefs end up taking the Heisman winner. Yes, there was a Heisman. Like this draft class is so in depth. I can't even explain to you guys how in depth the draft class is. Shout out to the commissioner of this CFM, JT. He literally makes his own draft class and he does it by playing NCAA 14. He like sims a four year college or a one year college season and stuff like that. And you know, he sees who the Heisman is and all this stuff. You see the national champion. So it is crazy in depth what this draft class is about and what goes into, you know, the off season here in this league. It's a crazy league, man. Compared to what we did with the Seahawks CFM, this is like tenfold more advanced what we're doing out here. And it's a lot of fun for us. And as you guys saw, we made a lot of trades, man. We made a lot of moves with the Miami Dolphins. And because of that, all the moves we made. And also, by the way, we also traded for Mohamed Sanu. I don't know if I even mentioned that, but we traded for Mohamed Sanu with a six round pick so we had we lost one of our two six round picks but we ended up getting Mohamed Sanu which was fine because we needed wide receiver depth and I don't mind taking a one year flyer on Mohamed Sanu and see what kind of veteran leadership he brings to us maybe he could be a, a mentor to Colin Johnson but let's not talk too much about that right now because we have another draft pick to worry about the Dolphins are about to be on the clock again so what do we do with this 36th overall pick I think once again, we will be thinking about best player available, but at this time, we kind of need to look at some needs for us and, you know, look at offensive line at some point in this draft if we feel comfortable taking one. Maybe a pass rusher, even though we got Derrick Brown early on. You know, Derrick Brown's a big boy in the middle. We need someone outside. And, you know, we have Matthew Judon, we have Vic Beasley. I'm just not sure we're going to be resigning any of those guys, so... 
you know, I'm not quite sure what we're doing with this next base right, pick right now. I'm really just kind of in a tailspin in my mind trying to figure out what exactly we're going to do. Maybe we take another wide receiver with this pick. Who knows? Because like I said, this draft class is a lot of great wide receivers. You see Paulson Adebo from Stanford. He goes off the board. We're not thinking about cornerback right now, even though there are some good cornerbacks left on the board. As you see, there's a number of guys with first round draft grades that we're not going to really look at here. We don't really want to draft the running back in the first round. So at this point, I'm looking at some of the best pass rushers out here. We got Anthony Jennings out of Alabama. We got Malik Harrison out of Ohio State. He's pretty high on the board. As far as receivers go, we got uh, Tyson Wallace, I believe his name is, that's still on the board. We got C.D. Lamb that is still on. Tylen Wallace, that's his name out of Oklahoma. But I feel like at this point, you know, maybe we'll hold off on that. Even though I really wouldn't love to draft another wide receiver, I feel like we really need to address our pass rush. Like, that was really a weakness of this team. So I didn't really see any um, offensive linemen on the board that I liked or had high enough to justify taking them with this 36th overall pick. So we might just hold on to that offensive line pick with our 46th overall pick. So I feel like here, Malik Harrison is our guy looking at his stats, you know, not many crazy pass rushing stats though as any of his top three. So maybe we go with Anthony Jennings here, right? Like he had some pretty, sick looking stats out there some fit, sick looking physical stats and the clock is winding down on us we gotta make a decision soon see i'm looking at running backs i'm i'm really trying to figure out who to pick with this for this 36th overall pick maybe we do go with tywin wallace he had one of the top 40 yard dash times and you see his catching stats are pretty great so maybe that's the speedster on our team instead of henry ruggs who we won earlier in the draft and at the end of the day with 20 seconds left we end up grabbing malik harrison Oh man, <laughs> these are franchise altering decisions. So we really can't play around with, you know, what we're doing here. And we end up taking Harrison and he was like just a raw player, a very raw player. Great physical attributes, 82 speed. I believe he had some pretty decent strength out here. Good acceleration. The pass rushing stats leave a little bit to be desired though. So whether Malik Harrison was the right pick or not, maybe, maybe not, I'm not quite sure, but you know, we'll just have to work on, like I said, very raw player. We'll try to develop him and, you know, get those stats up. We could get his power move and his block shedding above 80 or something during his rookie year. Then he could potentially end up actually being a force for this Dolphins defense. Still, though, he's on par with what we were using last season. Last season, we used Charles Harris and Andrew Van Ginkle as our outside pass rushers. And those guys weren't good at all. So, like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool with taking Malik Harrison and, you know, starting him on day one. Like I said, everybody that we're drafting right now are day one starters on this team. All right, Colin Johnson, day one starter. Derek Brown, definitely day one starter. And then we got um, Brian Hall or Bryce Hall, whatever his name is. He's definitely going to be a day one starter, probably cornerback number two. Even though we have Jason Verrett, we'll probably start him at the CB2 spot. Obviously, we have Xavier Howard. And already in the secondary, we have Eric Berry. We re-signed Eric Berry in free agency, by the way. And we have him along with Minka Fitzpatrick. So, you know, a lot of decisions to be made. So we skip ahead to the 17th pick of the second round, which is our pick. We don't need to see the whole second round. I, I wanted to show you guys the whole first round since, you know, this is an actual imported draft class. And you guys can see how the entire first round goes in an online connected franchise with 32 users. And the first round went by, like, pretty quick compared to what you would normally expect in a CFM. So I thought that was pretty cool. So here we go with this 17 pick. I'm just looking at guys on the board. We don't really want a running back. I'm not sure we want Gaziano at the right end spot. So at the end of the day, CD Lamb with the 40, 49th overall pick for the Miami Dolphins. And you see CD Lamb kind of is a little bit like what Colin Johnson brought to the table. Not sure his route running is there. It's better than Colin Johnson, but he seems to just be a monster athletically. And with guys like this, you could develop them into route running. You could put attribute points into route running and get them up to par. And you just can't teach those physical stats. So we have two young rookies on this team, along with Jakeem Grant at our three top wide receiver positions. Because it is Mohamed Sanu probably moves to wide receiver number four in the depth chart, which is fine. I We use the six round pick to get him. It's He'll be insurance in case someone gets hurt as well. So... You know, that's still going to be a pretty good trade for us at the end of the day. We skip ahead to the 10th pick of the fourth round. This is the next time the Dolphins are on the board. We traded away our third round pick. So here we are with pick number 10 here. And I'm looking, I'm looking at guys I want to pick. Once again, no offensive linemen kind of strike my eyes. So we go with a quarterback, Khalil Tate. How about this? And check out the stats on Khalil Tate. Throw power pretty good. Speed, 85 speed. 
that's, um, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. So, Khalil Tate ends up being drafted by the Miami Dolphins, who have Josh Rosen under contract for two more years. But all of a sudden, this brings competition. Josh Rosen had no competition at the quarterback position last year. We had Ryan Fitzpatrick as the only other quarterback on the depth chart. Now, this kind of alerts Josh Rosen a bit that, you know, he's not that comfortable as the franchise quarterback of this team. And, you know, even though we had a good season with Rosen, I know some of you guys in the comment section were saying that you guys wanted to see potentially a quarterback on the team. And he was just a guy that I had my eye on. And considering our next pick was not until the sixth round, you know, I didn't want to, I knew he wouldn't be on the board then. So I, I had to reach a little bit on him. At the end of the day, I'm, I'm okay with that because I feel like that's a guy that we, we can work on. That's a guy we can work on. And can he be the franchise quarterback? I don't know. As you see, we draft Rakeem Boyd. He's just the highest player available right here. Running back position, you can never have too many running backs, I feel like, right? So we have Nelson Aguilar, we have Jordan Howard, and now we have Rakeem Boyd at the halfback number three position. And considering Nelson Aguilar is kind of an experiment, who knows if how well he's going to stick at the running back position. You know, it's nice to have someone besides Jordan Howard as an actual running back. So we take Rakeem Boyd out of Arkansas, and he's a 70 overall, not that fast. So I don't know what we're going to do with him. And now we skip ahead to where the Miami Dolphins have three of the final, what, six picks in the draft? I'm not sure what, I don't know how in the world the Dolphins end up with these picks, by the way. I didn't trade for any of these picks. One of these is our own draft pick. This 27th pick is our draft pick, but the 28th pick and the 31st pick are just trades that the Dolphins made in real life that we ended up having in this CFM. So you guys see our draft board is pretty empty at this point, right? We don't have many guys that, besides like undrafted players that I didn't even put on the draft board, so. And I'm just going to shoot darts at the wall and see what happens here. And, you know, kind of just stick with our draft board here. We could just take flyers on some random guys. But, I mean, considering our roster still doesn't have that much depth to it. Like, these are guys that are going to probably be a part of the 53-man roster at the end of the day. So, you know, back-to-back -back pace. We're going to take Thomas Graham here, our second cornerback that we'll take. Brad Stewart, looking at him, but at the end of the day, we ended up going with... Thomas Graham Jr. And he ends up being a pretty decent player physically. I mean, as far as a guy you pick, well, like the fifth to last pick, you can't be mad about 94 speed and, you know, 95 acceleration. And you could be pretty upset with the press. He would get destroyed if I tried to press with him. But that's what you get out of a seventh round pick, right? I mean, that's not that bad. Someone drafted a punter here. I mean, I guess you take the best punter off the board. That's okay. The Dolphins are pretty set at special teams, though. We have ourselves Joey Sly and Matt Hack. So we are all good there. And now with our final pick in the draft, we're most likely going to take Brad Stewart. If Brad Stewart had like a seventh round pick, I would probably just take him a flyer on someone random here. You see, I'm looking at the safety just to make sure. I do want to draft the young safety because, you know, even though we have Minka Fitzpatrick and Eric Berry, Eric Berry's on a one-year deal. I'm not sure we're going to re-sign him again, so... It'd be nice to have someone that, you know, we could keep in the shadows that maybe Eric Berry can mentor. So we end up taking Brad Stewart Jr., 87 speed, 63 zone. Nothing too special about this guy looking at his stats. Um, hit power is not that high, so I don't know what Brad Stewart's going to be on this team, but uh, he'll be a part of the squad. So let's go into the preseason, man. I'm going to show you guys some action from our two of our three preseason preseason games that we actually played this one against the new york giants who we played last season and the second one's going to be against the pittsburgh steelers who we also played last season so right away the first couple of highlights involve bryce hall making plays on the ball and stopping these giants receivers so bryce hall definitely looks like a day one ready cornerback on this squad and we're not throwing him into the fire exactly because he's going to be the number two guy we're going to have xavier howard taking most of the number ones as colin johnson the number one receiver on the depth chart for the Dolphins just torches Agnew and gets himself a long touchdown as you see Brad Stewart's gonna get the interception that's not really Brad Stewart though that's just me using him Brad Stewart getting the INT and Brad Stewart's actually gonna be gone he's taking this one for a pick six so if there's any way to develop a young rookie in the preseason it's by getting a pick six I'd say so that's a good move for him as you see Khalil Tate in at the quarterback position for the Miami Dolphins and we got two rookies in the backfield, Boyd and Tate, as you see, the Giants working with whatever they've got. One of those players is not Bryce Hall, who has had one heck of a preseason debut for the Miami Dolphins. Getting the interception, here's Tate in the corner for Colin Johnson, who gets his second touchdown in his first ever NFL preseason game. And what accuracy from Khalil Tate. And Tate is definitely impressing. 
right now. Look at Tate scrambling for the first down on the read option. This kind of mobility was definitely missing from the Miami Dolphins last season. You see off the edge, that is Malik Harrison with his second sack of the game. So this first preseason game is a major success as far as getting the young guys involved. Derek Brown was making a couple of great plays in the ball. As you see, we skipped to the end of the game. We actually lost the game. Uh, the Giants ended up making a comeback, but I mean, obviously in preseason, wins and losses aren't really the concern. We're just trying to develop guys out here, and, you know, we definitely did a great job of that. I don't know why we played Xavier Howard in the preseason, to be completely honest. He had nine tackles. He probably should have not had nine tackles. Probably not, should have seen the field for nine plays. So, you see his stats out here. Harrison got a sack. Um, Derek Brown had a couple of big plays inside. Obviously, Bryce Hall had the interception and a couple of pass breakups. C.D. Lamb ended up not doing too much in his first game, so we'll try to get him a bit more involved. But Colin Johnson had two pretty big touchdowns for us. I'm definitely impressed with the physicality that Colin Johnson brings to the table as we just throw up a jump ball, and Johnson's going to come down with it. Colin Johnson looking like Calvin Johnson now here. Third down, Rosen in the corner, fires to C.D. Lamb, second down and goal. Khalil Tate in, and unfortunately, Tate ends up throwing the interception. So, this is preseason week number three that you guys are seeing right now. As we go to Lamb, who makes the catch, makes the move, and gets the touchdown. C. D. Lamb brings a lot of elusiveness to the table. And you know that's something we love on the Miami Dolphins with Jakeem Grant, especially, and Albert Wilson last season. Having a guy like C. D. Lamb will just help us make moves in the open field with our quick passing attack as you see Bryce Hall making a play on the ball it ends up being intercepted by Xavier Howard I mean all of our top players were there Hall Xavier Howard Minka Fitzpatrick look at Nelson Aguilar Aguilar in open space Ryan Shazier trying to chase him down I don't know I guess Ryan Shazier is active in the CFM but uh, he's not going to catch Nelson Aguilar there and that's the kind of home run hitter that Nelson Aguilar can be on this squad as you see Brad Stewart's going to get another interception because we're using him here and that's cool for Brad Stort, but that was an, a bad pass from the quarterback. That wasn't really nothing he did. As you see, Malik Harrison making some plays out here in the defensive end. Like I said, a raw prospect. Even though it's preseason, he's definitely, you know, making plays out here, showing up on tape, and that's what we want to see. Nelson Aguilar is definitely showing up on tape. Oh my. Aguilar could be fun this season. I mean, as far as, you know, a receiving running back, Aguilar definitely fits the bill. This is uh, a touchdown. All right. That's just. Man, I mean, we souped up our secondary just to get, like, agged on for a Hail Mary. That's, that's cool, man. And, uh, definitely see the Lamb, though, making some plays. He didn't have a great, great preseason debut, but Lamb definitely doing better here. Look at Nelson Aguilar. His third touchdown of the preseason. As you guys know, week number three of the preseason is really the dr dress rehearsal game where, you know, you're trying to, you know, feel your opponent out. Most of the starters play for a long time. Along with some backups like Khalil Tate making moves again at 26 yards. And Khalil Tate, once he takes over his offense, you know, the mobility he brings to the table definitely sticks out. It's definitely noticeable as you see we throw the interception there. Trying to hit up CD Lamb in the seams and some glitchy little play by Stevie Nelson ends up getting him the interception. As you see, once again, Quill Tate, the pass rush doesn't get home and Tate's able to take off. And the quarterback out of Arizona is definitely making his case to try to be a starter. What a throw! But Lamb can't make the catch in the back of the end zone. A beautiful throw from Tate who catches the edge. Once again, Tate using that rushing ability that he has to make plays in this preseason game. As you see, definitely a clean pocket here. We're just going to chuck one down. Field to Colin Johnson, who is a jump ball monster. At least in the preseason, man. Colin Johnson is proving to be a guy that you cannot leave one-on-one. -on -one because unless you have a top flight defensive back, Colin Johnson will make you pay as we try to throw the fade for the second time in this game. I'm just trying, trying to high point fade to Colin Johnson. And clearly, they're not working. One of them got intercepted by Joe Hayden. And the other one just wasn't even thrown right. I'm not even sure it would have worked if it was thrown on target. Third down and 16. Open. It's Colin Johnson. Late in the going. This is actually a close game here. Myself and the Steelers guy. We were just going back and forth, kind of screwing around. And, you know, we want to try to make sure we get a two possession lead here. Hopefully, there's CD Lamb underneath. Not a first down, though. Third down and two. Steelers called their timeout. Out route. Lamb. Same way he scored earlier. He scores again. CD Lamb for number two. And that'll. Be it for this game that'll be it for this video man 35 minute video a lot happened in the dolphins offseason i hope you guys enjoyed everything we were able to show you guys here because it was a lot and 
see Nelson Aguilar had that big 90 yard run so that'll definitely inflate his stats and all the rookies once again showing up pretty well the next video we will do with this Miami Dolphins team in this CFM will be game number one of the 2020 NFL season the Miami Dolphins will be starting their season at home I believe on Monday night or Sunday night football against the number one seed last year in the AFC the Kansas City Chiefs so game one will feature Patrick Mahomes taking on our new look Miami Dolphins. Leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed this one. Subscribe for more Madden 20 gameplays and CFM videos. And I'll catch you guys next time for the start of the 2020 season between the Miami Dolphins and the Kansas City Chiefs.